Hi, this is Jim Wright. In this post builder lesson, we'll learn about sourcing and the switch command. Our lesson plan is to examine the switch command. We'll also learn how to source an external file. Then we'll learn about the proc command and also look at some debugging tools that are available inside a post builder. The switch command is similar to the if statement in that it allows you to control logic and flow of the program. The difference is the switch command compares the value of a variable to a list of possible values. The example I have here shows that we first use the code name switch, then we supply it with a variable, and then what switch does is it compares the value of that variable to a list of possible outcomes. Now this is a literal comparison, so if it matches this comparison exactly, capital T, capital H, capital I, capital S, then it will do what's inside of these curly braces. If not, it will go to the next item in the list and compare that. Once it finds one, it will do the action within that framework surrounded by curly braces. However, it's possible that no match occurs. In that case, the switch will have a default section and a default action. And this is used only when none of the previous possible results matched the variable value. So a real life, va a real life example I have here is I'm performing a switch statement on a variable called mom coolant mode. If mom coolant mode is set to on, then we will output literally this statement coolant on. Flood, coolant flood, mist, coolant mist, etc. until we've reached the actual item that we have. So in this scenario, we'll output the coolant mode for each operation. So how did I discover that there was a variable called mom coolant mode or what its possible values were? Well, I went to utilities, browse mom variables, and then I typed in coolant and searched on that keyword. The very first variable that came up in the list was mom coolant mode. The possible values are on, flood, mist, and tab. This is actually incorrect. I filed a PR on this. Uh, there's one more possible value that's not listed in the documentation that's called through. So, I'll choose OK. I'll go to the custom command that I've already created. I did this so that you wouldn't have to watch me typing in all of this information but I do want to go through it and tell you what I typed in. We have the global command. We're bringing in the variable mom coolant mode. Then I do something that I don't normally recommend. I'm turning off sequence numbers inside of a custom command. The reason I don't recommend that is sometimes I build a post processor that I don't want sequence numbers on ever. And if I've turned it off inside of a custom command, I'm probably going to turn it on also and it can be difficult for me to find where that pesky mom set sequence on command is if it's inside of a custom command that I didn't look at. So normally I don't do this, but for the purpose of this demonstration I wanted to turn off sequence numbers. Then we have the actual switch command. Perform the switch on the value of mom coolant mode. Open curly brace. First we'll compare it to this value on. If this is true, we'll do a mom output literal coolant on. Same thing for flood, same thing for mist, same thing for tap, and then finally a default, and the default is for when we don't know what the value of mom coolant mode is, or I should say when the value of mom coolant mode doesn't match any of the previous ones. That's when we do the default. So I will add this new value that I discovered accidentally that wasn't in the documentation. The 
Then I'll save this and test it. In this face milling operation, I'll turn on coolant by going to Machine Control, Edit the Start of Path Events. I'll add the new event Coolant On. I'll set it to Mist. Choose OK and OK and OK. Now we can post-process this and we can see that I'm getting the value for coolant mist being output. Outputting the mode of coolant probably isn't a great use of the switch command. I do have one that's a little more realistic and that is I would like to identify the username, in other words who was post-processing this program and I can do that because we have access to the login ID of the user. But we know that the login name is typically not your real name, it's usually some some cryptic version of your name or it may be even just a series of letters and numbers. So I would like to create a switch command that that looks at the login ID of the user and then outputs the name of that user as the NC programmer when he post processes the program. The difficulty of this is we know that over time NC programmers that we have at our company will change and if we have multiple post processors we'll have to make multiple edits. So what would be nice is if we could have this this data stored in an external file that we could change in one place and then have all the post processors access that. Well we have that capability and I'll show you how that works. First I need to teach you a little bit about the proc command or the proc. The proc command allows you to create a, a new command basically that you can use in post builder. You can pass arguments to that proc and then get results back from that proc. And the basic outline looks like what we have here. First the keyword proc followed by the procedure name. You can pass arguments to it if you wish or you don't have to. Then the procedure will perform a task and then pass the results back or just return control back to the code that originally called it. So a more realistic example I have here that I was talking about, I have the identifier proc the name of the proc is username. I'll be passing the login ID and then I'll create a username that I'll make global so that I can have access to it when, it, when code is returned back. Then I'll perform a switch statement on the value of the login ID. If it's equal to my login ID, I'll set the username to Jim Wright. If it's the login ID is somebody else, I'll set the username consistent with theirs. The source command allows us to have that external file pulled into our post inside a post builder. It's under output settings and then there's a checkbox for a user TCL source file and I'll be using that command and you simply type in the name of your TCL file. Let's get started. So this is my external TCL file. It's called ncprogrammerList.tcl. I'll put this in the same directory as my post processor. First I have the switch statement using the value of login ID. If the NC programmer is write J, which is me, then I'll set the username to my name. I also have some other NC programmers that I'm working with, so I'm including their names also. 
and then finally I have a default which is unknown. Surrounding the switch statement I have my proc called username and I give this proc the argument login ID and then it uses the value of login ID to create this username variable. Finally, I'm using the global value on username so that it will be available when I need it back inside of PostBuilder. First, I need to bring in the external TCL file as part of my source. Output settings, other options, turn on source users TCL file, and then type in the name and location of the file itself. D, post processors, in C programmer list TCL. That will bring in the external TCL file, but it doesn't say where to use it. To do that, I need to go to Program and Toolpath, and at the Program Start Sequence, I'll create a new custom command, called Add Username. global username to bring it in from the external switch statement and mom log name now call the proc with the value of mom log name to pass that identifier to the proc then output the username Save the post and test it. We have successfully used the switch command in a realistic situation and we've also sourced in an external file. One last thing I want to point out, in PostBuilder, under Output Settings, Other Options, we have two very good options for debugging a post. The first one is Display Verbose Error Messages. What this means is if you create an error inside of your post, when you run the post inside of Cam Express, you'll get a much better idea of where the error is. The other one is the review tool. The review tool allows you to see a lot of information about what's going on internally inside of PostBuilder as the post processor runs. However, both of these options take extra time to run, so I recommend you turn them off before you release a post for production. So allow me to demonstrate the review tool. I'll save this post. I'll choose a single operation for post processing and then I'll run the post. The review tool creates a window 
that allows you to examine the contents of the post and the events from the post and if you click on either you can see the variables that are available and active for that particular line of code or that particular event. It's a very good way to learn what the value of certain variables are. You might even find variables that you didn't know existed. This was how I learned about Mom Machine Time. So remember to use the review tool and verbose error messages as an aid in debugging. However, turn them both off before you release the post for production. So to summarize, you learned how to use the switch command. You also learned how to source an external TCL file. You learned how to use the proc command. And you also learned about some of the debugging tools that are available within PostBuilder. Thanks for viewing. Our next lesson will be on the custom command library that comes with PostBuilder.